second only to the teepee, the totem pole is one of the most recognizable pieces of Native American life. However, this stereotypical piece of culture is actually only found among the tribes of the Pacific Northwest in North America. The largest of these tribes is the Kwakiutl of British Columbia. First studied by Franz Boas in the early 20th century, these hunters and gatherers have a system of life unique from any other people in the world. They are abundant in food, wealthy with possessions, and free to develop a rich and complex material culture. No other civilization lives like the Kwakiutl, and that is what makes them fascinating. Franz Boas named the 13 tribes in the Pacific Northwest that spoke the common language of Kwakwala the Kwakiutl, roughly translated as Kwakwala-speaking people. The time he spent living with the tribes, as well as his collaboration with native George Hunt, allowed Franz Boas to develop a deep and extensive ethnography of the Kwakiutl. However, Boas was actually mistaken in his naming, and the correct translation would be Kwakwaka Waka. The original name is still popularly used throughout the world, though, and the mistake lives on in history. Despite this slip, Boaz was still able to uncover very interesting research about these tribes. The Kwakiutl are a hunting and gathering society with their main diet consisting of fish, seafood, and an assortment of berries and nuts. What makes their foraging so unique is the amount of work they perform to acquire it. The Pacific Northwest is rich in plants and animals, so very little time is needed to find and prepare food. Where an average American has to work 40 hours a week to barely scrape by, a Kwakiutl man may only have to work 10 hours a week, if that, to provide for his family. With a reliable food source, the Kwakiutl have a great amount of leisure time, which has helped them develop their elaborate social and material culture. The totem pole, mentioned earlier, is the most known piece of their culture. These enormous monuments are carved from a single tree, usually cedar, and represent historical legends, tribe history, and family lineage. Some totem poles are over 100 feet tall. That's as tall as a 10-story building. The Kwakiutl have also built extremely elaborate masks they use during tribal dances, like the winter ceremony. It is said that these dances are so precise, anyone who missed even a step of the choreography was executed. The masks themselves were intricately carved from wood, and usually open up to reveal other masks inside of them. Another famous ceremony amongst the Kwakiutl, probably the most famous, is the potlatch. Unlike other native groups, the Kwakiutl highly valued private property, and they don't view wealth and power by how much a person owns. They view status as how much a person can give away. The potlatch is a party held by a chief or other prominent member of the tribe where gifts are given to each guest. The idea is to redistribute the wealth of one family to the rest of the tribe. Some families had so many possessions they could actually afford to host massive bonfires where they burnt surplus goods. It may seem odd, but it becomes clear when their property is explained more. The main form of currency amongst the Kwakiutl was the wool blanket. They were traded, bartered, bought, and sold. Precious metals, such as gold, silver, and copper, were also valued. These metals were given names that represented the number of blankets they were traded for, and it brought prestige to anyone who would buy something for more than the number of blankets it was bought for previously. Blankets, copper, food, animal skins, and jewelry all traded hands during the potlatch. This ritual was such a staple in the native psyche, it was banned in 1885 because it hindered native assimilation into Western culture and religion. Such legislation has since been repealed. Much of the potlatch's significance comes from the actions and generosity of the chief and other families in the group. Much of the power in any Kwakiutl society is based on the family structure. The Kwakiutl have large extended families called Namima, roughly translated to one kind. Each tribe usually had four Namima, and each member of the Namima is enlisted a certain role based on relation. This emphasis on lineage formed a hierarchy in Kwakiutl society. At the top was the nobility, which gained its position through having the purest and strongest ancestry. Chiefs and shamans almost always came from this class. Next came the aristocracy, who were the families with the most wealth and power. 
Below them were the commoners, and finally the slaves. While the Kwaki'utl do have a diverse culture and lifestyle, they have lost much of this in the past century. Only about 5,500 Kwaki'utl are alive today, with only about 250 still speaking the original language they were named for. The totem poles they were famous for have all rotted away because the cedar they were made from is so susceptible to parasites and decay. It is believed that only a handful of totem poles have survived since the turning of the 20th century. Fortunately, more revitalization and preservation efforts have begun. A movement began in the late 90s to halt the extinction of the Kwakiutl race, language, and culture. With the renewed enthusiasm of the people, the Kwakiutl will only disappear if they allow it.